and welcome to my channel. I'm Homestead Tessie. Today we are going to have quite a long video. I'm going to try to make it as short as I possibly can, but we're going to be talking about medicinal herbs today. I have fairly extensive medicinal herbs in my garden because that is something that I'm passionate about. And I'm going to show you some books. We're going to be planting some very unusual herbs and I'm going to be showing you the garden. First, there is a disclaimer. I'm not a nurse nor a doctor, and I am not on any medications, neither is my husband or our family members. What you want to do is, if you're on medications and the idea of medicinal herbs really sounds like something that you would enjoy, you need to do your own research because they are herbs and they can have interactions with certain drugs. So you need to go and check out the different herbs and what it may mean to you as far as what medications that you use. But I'm going to go through a lot of information in this video. I'm going to try to do it in a way that everyone will understand. So what I am working on today is I have a whole bunch of stuff and I got to get my thoughts together on this one. This is a teaching video, but you need to do your own research. And how do you do that? Well, I love books. This is just a few of my favorite books. I have lots of books. Now, I don't have as many books as some people do. I probably have about 100 to 125 books. I have books into the 500 to 1,000. So all the books that I have, I use. And so I want to go ahead and we're going to talk about different subjects. Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's Gardens. The Earth Shall Blossom, Shaker Herbs, because we're going to talk about them. Also, we're going to talk about China Bailey's Book of Days, which is my ultimate favorite book. Ultimate favorite book. The Herbal Medic. This is another really good one. Knowledge to Forge. It's a family's book on forging. Now, this is just a drop in the bucket of all of my herb books. But these are the ones we're going to talk about today. A kid's herb book, which is amazing and the garden, this garden book. Okay, so this is called hot oregano. This is for cooking. And then here we have valerian. Now valerian you have to be very careful for with. This will help with the sleep. This is a nervine, so you can make a tea with it. It can help you with sleep and also for nervous tension and things like that. These are daylilies, they haven't bloomed yet. Then we have yarrow. Yarrow is good for different kinds of infection. So I have two different kinds of yarrow. And then we have all kinds of various mints. This is echinacea, which did not flower yet, and that is for colds and flu and things like that. Now this is mugwort. Now mugwort is good for parasites. Now these, all of these things you can drink as a tea. I have lots of oregano. I feel like I have a really extensive medicinal garden. This is comfrey. In other words, known as bone setter. If you break a bone, you sprain your bone, you can wrap the leaves around your broken bones and it will help them heal. I do not recommend you take this internally, though some people do. Lamb's ear I use as band-aids. This is not taken ex internally. And then we have rosemary, which is for cooking. Here we have sage. You can make a tea with that. Various mints. And then we have marshmallow. So this is called marshmallow, which has more benefits too in a tea. More chamomile, various kinds of thyme. Just smells amazing. Lemon verbena, which is amazing as a tea. Calendula, which is good for healing, healing salves, which I put in that. It gets beautiful marigold type flowers. Very good tea if you cannot sleep. Also will help your nerves as well. 
feverfew. Feverfew is good if you have migraine headaches. You have to be very careful with feeder with feverfew. It is a bitter herb, so you want to be very careful with that. This is feverfew, which looks a lot like chamomile, except for it has a very pungent odor. And chamomile has a very beautiful apple scent to it. Thomas Jefferson's, this is his Lovage, which is a replacement of celery. Roman chamomile. Different kinds of sage. We have some wild strawberries, pansies, more fever few. Tasha Tudor Sicily. And we have more of this beautiful, oh, it didn't bloom yet. By the time I get this edited, it probably will be more lavender. Absolutely amazing. Lavender's one of my favorites. I have some really exotic medicinal herbs coming that I am ready to plant. And we'll work on that here in a minute. So we have chives. Most people know what chives are. And here we have bee balm. Bee balm, it makes another really good tea. And then here, which is blooming, and I hope I get berries. This is elderberry, which is great for flus and coughs in the wintertime. To make a tea with that. I think it just about named everything. This would be considered a colonial garden. So what I do is I do a lot of research on what the colonial America would have and I try to replicate it as much as I can. So we have vegetables growing in amongst the herbs. Right here we have a potato patch. Spring onions growing in this one. And if some herbs come up here and there, like here's another thing of comfrey, I keep that. I let that grow. I have to harvest all of this stuff this week yet. So this is where I make my own Mrs. Dash, which I have lots of videos on it. I dehydrate all of this and make my own seasonings. The earth shall blossom. So I'm extending my medical herbs. I'm going to be planting angelica today and chicory. So chicory, what you see is along the road, it has a bluish flower and chicory was brought over by the colonial in, in colonial times and they used that as a substitute for coffee. Medical Medic is another good book. First it talks about all the different symptoms of diseases and what herbs are good for that and then in the back of the book it actually talks about the herb and what the herb is good for. Now this would be a really good as like an encyclopedia so this is great for if you need to find something really quickly. It talks about burns and all kinds of things, stomach flu, and all the herbs that are good for that. This one is my favorite. So this one is 365 days, and it talks about all the different things that you can grow. So we are gonna be planting mullein. So mullein is really good for you. And this is the chicory. And we are gonna talk about the Mexican mint marigold, I planned it that the other day and that will be a video on it. Set. Rattlesnake, now this is a flower. And then here's Angelica. And then Whorehound, I would like to make some cough drops and that's using Whorehound. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you really quickly how I work on small herbs like this. So let me get you one of these seeds. There's a pack of seeds right there. They're tiny. I'd put these in the garden. They won't grow in the garden because they're so tiny. You take a bowl like this. Dollar Tree has these and you're gonna fill this up with soil. I've done many tutorials on this and I'm going to show you as they grow then what you do. We're gonna sprinkle the seeds on top and then that's all we do. 
There is no drainage holes in here because I don't water these like you would water other plants. I take a mister and I keep misting them when they're a little dry. I'm gonna go ahead and plant all of these and then I'll get back to you in a minute. I'm gonna plant all these and then I'll get back to you in a minute. It's very important that you label. Label, label everything so you know exactly what it is because sometimes when it germinates and you don't label it, you have no clue what it is. I have a love and passion for growing things. And so for me, it's really important to always learn and to keep learning and keeping my knowledge of the things that I enjoy. So I would you know, suggest to you, is there something that you really enjoy in life? Get to know it more and grow in your knowledge. Now I know when I share books like these, books can be kind of expensive. Now this, I got on Thrift Books, I paid less than five dollars for it and that's with shipping included but I love books and books have really inspired me and so when I read a book I look at it and I say okay what can I implement here in my home now of course there's so many ideas out there that are very expensive and I can't afford that but there's always something I can afford and I look into these books and think outside the box and get my own ideas and if books are too expensive for you, you can go to your local library. You can request books from your local library and you can take photocopies or you can write them down. And it's just so much fun learning all the different things that God has created that can help heal our bodies. I got this kid's book last year and it's amazing. It has all kinds of amazing things that you can do with these herbs. It's made for children, but it's great for a beginner's book. And I'm gonna have a whole bunch of different videos coming out with all of this. Making dream pillows with lavender. Yarrow is the wound herb. And I could go on and on five hours here on YouTube to share with all of you what all these herbs do, but it's really important that you do your own research. All right, so what you're seeing here is these are all culinary herbs. Now culinary herbs can be medicinal as well. So we have thyme. Thyme is a anti antibacterial. And then we also have lavender, which helps you with sleep. And this is chamomile, which is distinct with the apple scent. Then we have summer savory, 